with Dougal Beatty. Good evening. We begin with breaking news. AFL legend Ron Barassi has died aged 87. Let's go live to Tony Jones, who's outside AFL headquarters. Tony, his family has released a statement. Yeah, that's right, Dougal, and I think uh, Australia in general is shocked to learn the news, which uh, only filtered through probably about 20 or 30 minutes ago. And you're right, the family has released a statement, uh, a very short one, if I can read it to you, saying, after a full and extraordinary life, Ronald Dale Barassi, aged 87, left us today due to complications from a fall. He died peacefully, surrounded by a loving family. We ask for privacy at this time. And of course, the Barassi family, his wife and children and grandchildren have been able to maintain a level of privacy throughout their lives, which is quite ironic, given that Ron Barassi is one of the most recognisable faces, one of the most recognisable names, as I said, in Australia. And uh, that legend all began the moment virtually he pulled on a Melbourne football jumper and he would go on to figure in six premierships with his beloved demons. And I guess, you know, part of that was his love also also for his coach in Norm Smith and we'll talk about that a little bit later on but in 1964 the unthinkable happened and this is all part of the Barassi story in that he up and left Melbourne and headed to uh, Carlton of all places Prince's Park and it's there that he weaved his magic yet again first as a player and then as a coach per se when he led the Blues to two premierships so it was very much mission complete for Ron Barassi having been an extraordinary highly decorated footballer and then of course as a decorated coach so he spent the next couple of years after 1971 keeping in mind that 1970 grand final was still one of the more iconic grand finals of all time it's when the Blues were dead and buried at half time and then Barassi just said play on at all costs tam ball at all costs and they ate up that 40 point deficit and went on to win as I said it's still one of the most remarkable Remarkable victories of all time and certainly one which is cherished by the Carlton Football Club. So after 71 he went into a two-year hiatus and then remarkably the shrewd administrator in Ron Joseph lured him out of retirement. It was over a lunch, it might have even been signed on the back of a coaster and then Ron Barassi went to Arden Street and success just wasn't part of the Arden Street, the North Melbourne, the Shinbona DNA. But again he weaved his magic and delivered a premiership to Arden Street. It was extraordinary and he became a North Melbourne legend along with uh, a much loved figure at uh, Carlton and also at Melbourne and just when you thought it was all done and dusted the coaching bug bit again and he went back to his beloved demons under that now infamous five-year plan he didn't gain the success that he did at North Melbourne Carlton and Melbourne uh, but what he did do was give the club relevance again and that's exactly what the Sydney Swans needed when they came calling again through Ron Joseph and he went up to Sydney um, not necessarily to weave his magic by that stage maybe Ron Barassi's coaching skills had waned somewhat, but they needed a face. They needed relevance in the Harbour City, which is a rugby league stronghold, as we know, and Ron Barassi certainly did that. So after the Sydney Swans, it was coaching case closed, and Ron Barassi concentrated then on television work, radio work. He had a long association with 3AW, in particular Neil Mitchell's program, and Neil remained a very, very close friend of Ron Barassi. He's only seeing him a couple of days ago. So uh, Ron Barassi then basically slipped into semi-retirement, but the accolades kept coming for Ron Barassi, uh, elevated his legend status in the AFL Hall of Fame, legend status in the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. He's been given a statue at the MCG. There is probably one missing part of the uh, the jigsaw when it comes to tributes for Ron Barassi, and that's something that the AFL is going to have to address, and it's just so sad now that it wasn't addressed prior to his passing, and that's naming the Premiership Cup after Ron Barassi. It's just, it really is a no-brainer when you think about it. No other football has achieved premiership success like Ron Barassi. No other football has been such an ambassador for the game. When you when you are instant, instantly recognised by the name Ronald Dale, when you are instantly recognised by the number 31, it says a lot about the uh, the legend that was Barassi himself. Um, there are, uh, I guess, in a, in a game where it's uh, all about wins and losses, Ron Barassi's most painful loss came not on the football field, but on the field of battle in Tobruk during World War II, when his father, Ron Barassi Sr., died in, in, in battle. Now, at the time, Ron Barassi was only five years old, and it was something that um, pained him throughout his years, from five years onwards, uh, and he became a fierce supporter of legacy, who helped Ron Barassi and his mother through those very, very painful years. 
And then a father figure emerged, and that being Norm Smith, who I mentioned a little earlier. He went and lived with Norm Smith. He absolutely idolised Norm Smith. And as I said, he was uh, in many ways the father that he never knew. Um, I guess in time, we'll, we'll bring back footage of when 60 Minutes took Ron Barassi to, uh, to Brook, and it was really one of the most emotional moments you'd ever want to see when they walked around that very battlefield where uh, Ron Barassi's father was killed. So, look, there is so much to talk about when it comes to the life of Ron Barassi. The tributes will begin as early as tonight. Of course, there's an AFL final being played at the Adelaide Oval. I would imagine, I would hope, I would expect there will be a minute's silence. Uh, flags will be flown at half-mast and then the tributes will begin. I would imagine also that the family will be offered a state funeral and Ron Barassi is certainly worthy of a state funeral because it's not just through his football prowess, but he was just a gentleman. He really was and you need no further evidence of that only uh, to think back several years ago when he came to the aid of a young lady who was being attacked on a street in St Kilda. Now at that stage, Ron Barassi was in his late 70s and came to that woman's aid. And it really was remarkable to think that he still had that fight left in him. So a very, very sad day, Dougal. And as I say, tributes will come fast. Uh, though they will come heavily and it is with a heavy heart that we, uh, we thank Ron Barassi for all that he did, not just for Australian sport, but for Australia in general. And uh, I'll be back a little later on with more tributes as they start coming in and hopefully a statement from the AFL Dougal. An incredibly sad day for the football world. Tony Jones, thank you. Well, Ron